Hello and welcome to Wise Women Weekdays and today we're going to have um, our guest on which is Hannah, give us a wave, Hannah Cummings and she is a human design expert so we're going to have a chat about human design and how it can help us in these crazy times we're living in to really understand ourselves and use our energy well. I'm Leanne Campbell. I am the wise woman today. Well, I am a wise woman. I'm a feature regularly on this on this channel. And I'm a life coach, um, life and well-being coach, and I specialize in somatic practices. So what I love to do is to really take things deep um, by using using the body to really tap into the unconscious in order to change patterns and ways that ways of behaving that no longer serve us. And Hannah and I actually do have run a business together, a handpicked life. And I just really wanted to invite her on to Wise Women Weekdays to so we can because human design is such a rich area. It's so exciting. And we've been um experimenting more and more together with really building it into every area of our lives and today I'd like to share with you um probably a, a little bit but it'll feel like a lot because there's so much in human design so welcome Hannah thanks for popping along today <laughs> yeah thank you for having me um and we're also uh Leanne is also my auntie as well so we are family, yeah, this... <laughs> uh, which we always forget to mention I feel like so. a minor detail yeah yeah just yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> not that important um no thank you for having me um and yeah so I am um, a human design reader um I'm also an astrologer and I've been studying both of those for four years um I do tend to lean more to towards human design these days and I think the reason for that astrology is so incredible for like recognizing patterns and looking at big like you know bigger picture stuff and also kind of understanding what transits are coming up in um in your life and kind of giving meaning and purpose to that so you know, for example, I've just finished my Saturn return, Leanne, I know you're experiencing yours at the moment. So like those periods of time when you have consciousness and awareness around how they can impact you, it's it, it's so it's so helpful to know that there's meaning and purpose within that. And I feel like that's what astrology really gives us. Um, human design has really kind of just caught my attention so much over the last few years, because I've really seen a lot of massive transformation in people's lives from having applied it, particularly my own. Um, and human design, even though it's a vastly complex system, like almost, I'd say, way more complex than astrology, um, it, at the highest level, it's just so simple. And I know that was one of your, is it your Chinese medicine teacher that used to teach you that? Yeah. Uh, or Qigong teacher. Um, but like, so it's vastly complex. You can dig into all of these different things that kind of make you you and like your individual energy. But actually, it all just comes back down to like applying your, your own unique strategy and authority into your life. And if you do that, then everything else just plays out naturally anyway. So I think it's just so practical and it's so easy to apply immediately into your life that yeah. it's just, yeah, it's my favorite topic in the world. <laughs> yeah, 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 definitely. And I'm, I think what, what has really drawn me, um, and particularly in recent months, actually, because what what I what I realised about myself is I love the ancient practices. I love the fact that there's this hidden, well, not even hidden. What once when you really go into, I guess what has been hidden, what was hidden for so long, and is now more and more available to us that we've got these threads of truth that are are simple they're natural laws that are simple that when we begin to apply them it really you know makes a huge enhances life in every way on every level and so there was a bit of me that was like turning backwards the ancient practices oh in our modern day world we've messed it up we've kind of you know I kind of shy away from technology as you know <laughs> um, <laughs> and uh, it, it really clicked with me in the last couple of months of going, no, wait a minute. Like, you know, if, even if we think about the, the first explorers ex finding America and going, you know, going in there with everything they knew, we're going to build something new. This is the modern day. If only at that point they we could have stopped and joined together, like met 
the wisdom that was there with the wisdom that was coming in and what I realize is I've kind of I've sort of shunned a lot of modern day um and when you first told me and I'd like you to tell us a bit more in a moment that you know human design was something that were, that came through in the, in the 80s there was a bit maybe went oh it, you know it no and it's a mix of a ching and this and it so I heard all this thing of oh yeah it's just pulling all this thing that's already there but I don't know something what I've found is the more I've been listening the more we've been exploring and implementing is that I felt like on a very subtle levels my vibration has changed and I felt myself open up and really realize oh no it it is time to embrace everything that we've got right here, our technology, our, the advancements that we've created. But what we haven't had is we've got intelligence without wisdom. And that's dangerous, I think. That, that That's my point of view, that you, when you bring in the wisdom with the intelligence, with the fact that we are beings that will continue to develop but having our roots is a bit like unless you're really grounded, you're not going to connect to whatever it is for you, universe, God, spirit. You, we've got to get grounded first. And in having the, the knowledge in allowing, you know, our brains have developed. We're incredibly intelligent, but without the wisdom, that's where we break off. So I feel like I'm marrying that the wisdom with the and embracing more that okay don't turn your back on this you know mm -hmm. let's look at this new technology let's see what's there and let's finally bring it together so we can create new earth we can create you know a way of living where we're all in our power so having said that tell us a bit more about what human design is and and yeah I love 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 that you said that and it's interesting actually I don't think I've ever heard you say it in that way but that's exactly it so human design is a synthesis of ancient wisdom and modern science so it's based in the I Ching from um, ancient Chinese philosophy which is like a 6,000 year old oracle system um it is based in uh, Kabbalah the Jewish tree of life it's based in um astrology so it draws from the wisdom of astrology. It's also based on the Hindu Brahman chakra system, but a slightly evolved version of that. And then it also goes into epigenetics, quantum mechanics, quantum physics. So if you kind of like, it's kind of hard to understand how they all link together. And we're not going to go into that today. It's really complicated. And actually there's a whole separate study of human design, which is just like the science side and more mechanical quantum side. And then there's a whole separate study, which is all about, you know, at like the like people's birth charts per, like how they personally exchange energy with the world and things like that so really what you just said is exactly what human design is like it's it's drawing from those ancient practices and ancient wisdom but then bringing it together in a really really practical applicable system that can actually help us create change in our lives and also it's not an accident that human design came to us in the 1980s you know like humanity evolves at different stages we we like uh, 200 years ago it was not important for people to follow their hopes and dreams and really get clear on like you know i like i don't enjoy working like this but i do enjoy working like this like they they were just trying to put food on the table a lot of the time they were just trying to survive so like we're now kind of in a stage of our evolution where we have the luxury to be able to start looking at these things and i know that that is um you know, I know that that's not everybody in the world, by the way. So, mm. but like now we are at a stage in our evolution where that's becoming important. In human design theory, we're moving from something called the age of the collective, which was all about where our systems and structures were being built. So for the last 200 years, I think we moved into it in 1781. And that whole, these, this, these whole 200 years have been about creating structures and systems um, and governments and things like that. Um, and that's been the focus of, of our evolution. And you know what, for better or worse, like that, that this period of time has been necessary. So what you mentioned before about like not integrating the wisdom from like the things that have happened in the past, like a lot of people are saying now, like, you know, um, you know, the governments need to change, the banking needs to change, systems need to change, they're wrong, they're bad. 
and yeah, maybe they don't completely serve us right now. And now we're moving into a different age where we can focus on something different. But actually, you know, we needed those structures and systems to kind of move us forward. And now we get to pivot and make them even better and like bring with us the lessons that we've learned and like how they ha how that hasn't served us. They're out of the like negative manifest vibration, low vibration manifestations of that specific period of time. Mm. Does that makes sense. Yeah, it does. And I, I just thought when you said that as well, that that's I like I like that because it, it's more, you know, often you can feel this kind of fear of us and them and having this big institute, the institutions to fight. But and which I, I feel that then we're throwing our energy at something rather than going, wait a minute. OK, these have been created. They serve. They made sense at one time. They're now out of balance we didn't get the message earlier on for whatever reason however we have created this as a collective and we can create something else if we really now embrace that and go you know it enough war enough fighting enough us and them we we don't actually need to fight anything what we what is important is to drop into what's here and now what isn't serving how can we make different choices with our energy? So, yeah, I mean, when you said that about, you know, we developed that and that served that time, I think it's, it, it, it is a really good way to see it. Absolutely. Um, and it's funny, like, I, I, I really had this realisation and it really dropped in for me when I was watching a series called Paul Dark, which was actually set in, like, 1780-something. And in that TV show, he um, uh, he's like a a lord or whatever and like he's helping the like all of the people who have farms like the the upper class were shipping the grain overseas because they were getting more money for it and the local people were literally starving their children were malnourished and you know there was literally no medicine no service for the people at all it was just kind of like every man for himself and that suddenly was like oh my god and that was then the beginning of the age of the collective where those systems and structures were built to stop things like that happening and I know they're not perfect and I know we're not all the yeah. way there <laughs> then it starts to help you see yeah there was there was meaning and purpose to that time yeah. it was important that we went yeah. through this it doesn't mean that we're perfect but that's what evolution yeah. is right it's just getting better and how can we do even better and how can we serve people in yeah. a better way and it's and like how can we flip that over again now so it is to serve the collective because it's kind of got to that point that is serving the few and we've not heard, we, we, you know, we, we've we've not acted quick enough in a way. You could see it like that, or see it as okay. Now is the time, and now and and I don't think it's any accident that we we so many things that were never available now are available. You know, like like the human design system, and also the fact like I learned qigong from my teacher who learned from his teacher who she died when she I think she died about 15 years ago she was 108 and still transmitting qigong and teaching and amazing woman but she learned from her grandfather because she learned in a time where you weren't allowed to teach until you'd been practicing for 70 years and he used to then then he began to teach her he didn't even teach his children Wow. So, you know, if you think how lucky we are that all this is available, if we choose to implement it and start create making better choice of how, we, you know, how we live and how we create our collective. Yeah. yeah. And what's really interesting is that we're really in a big shift now. So yeah. in yeah. 2027 is really in human design theory is where we're moving from the age of collective into the age of individualism but those changes don't happen overnight right like it, because it's a 200 year cycle that we're in like where there's periods of time that last about 200 years that kind of that transition we start to see whispers of it way earlier so it's not an accident that human design was born in the 1980s because it's really for this time it's now like okay those systems and structures have been built that's been the focus of the last 200 years but now it's more about us stepping into our individual power our uniqueness and how when we do that then we when we all play our part then we all fit better together as a whole so you know 
we're starting to see movements even in the NHS of like patient centered care and things like that, because it's really kind of moving away from like, okay, we figured out like how roughly how the body works and that's great. But now it's time, like now we've realized actually everybody's so different and it's so much more complicated than we ever thought. So yeah. now we need to move towards treating the individual. Mm. Even the same with like trans rights, um, like the LGBTQ community, like, you know, everybody's standing up for the right to be who you are, like, and for, you know, to be seen for like, you know, whoever you feel like being and that being okay. Mm. So, you know, that they're just examples of how we can start to see yeah. whispers of the culture shifting, right? And but I really that. is now moving more towards that, like understanding your unique mechanics and how you work and how when you step into that, then that's your contribution that when you're when you're in your best version of yourself, then that's how you contribute to making the world a better place. And that's really yeah. the big shift that's happening now. Yeah. And I think it's, it's finding that balance within everything, isn't it? It's like we are, you know, we're coming in here as a dip children are being born a different kind of human right now and and these these things are coming up and at the same time when things are moving so fast the ancient wisdom is important because I think with all of these things it's like it can then become a way of making things more confusing more controlling there there's always advantages to be taken and I think the more we I think at this time, it's really important that we find that unique balance of going, we don't have all the answers. We don't truly know what it's like to be in someone else's body or whatever. However, the one thing that um, I come back to is is often like, for example, I, I don't know what it's like to... Um, to be in an ethnic... to be someone who, who's an ethnic minority. However... I do know what it's like to feel isolated. I do know what it's like to feel afraid. I do know what it's like not to like my body and to not fit in and to, um, you know, feel cut off and different. I, I do understand those. And surely those, those are the things that should be linking us to allow us to then go, and yes, please, you you express that in whatever you, way is right for you and I think those are the things again where we we have all these new things cropping up which you know are quite difficult to get your head around but not allowing right now and I think this is our choice those to be institutionalized so then they become like this is the way we're all going to deal with this it's going to be illegal to do this it's going to be for me that's a point where it's like no that's not individualism that doesn't have a place now let's really get into how do we bring the wisdom the 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 old and the new together to create something completely different mm -hmm. and actually yeah. something's just clicked in with you saying that because that is an area for me that I've struggled with but that is the thing it's like there are times to say no and there are times to go enough of that but more importantly the battles need to end now we're not fighting anything we're choosing and we're making different choice and the more you get into your individual expression the more you're naturally going to overspill and create the collective in a way that serves everybody yeah I think that exactly makes sense. Exactly that. And it's so interesting when you start applying your human design because what you start to realize. So basically what human design gives you is like, um, it helps you with your personality. It helps you to understand your gifts. But what it actually really does is it helps you to understand the mechanics of your energy, of your aura and how you work and how you exchange energy with, with the world. And within that, how you actually have impact. So for example, some people have um in human design what we call a defined ajna and a channel linking to the throat and they have a defined throat what i'm not going to go into like what that specifically means but mm. um that for example there's someone where it's energetically correct for them to really share their opinions and it doesn't mean they have to change people's minds but what it means is it's really right for them to like create thoughts in their mind and express them out into the world but for some people it's completely energetically incorrect for them to do that and when they do it they're going to 
hit brick wall after brick wall after brick wall. And that sounds super disempowering. And I feel like you can speak to this in a minute because you did not like your human design when I first told you. And now you're like completely <laughs> sold. And that's what it's called the human design experiment for a reason. Like it's not a, it's not dogma. It's not a system. And even what you mentioned before, you know, we're not going to put it into a system where you have to, you know, fit perfectly into it. Yeah. It's really helping you understand, oh, maybe your energy works like this. Why don't you try it on for size and see how people respond, how life responds, how things work. Yeah. But really the point I was making there is like for some people, it's energetically correct for them to just be the embodiment of wisdom. They don't need to share their opinions all the time. And then that's where they have the most impact. So really when we're wanting to create change in the world and see a better place now more than ever, if we get our system in, in alignment, that's how we're going to have impact. That's how we're going to change. Yeah. That's how we're going to create change. And really, you know, the only, the only power we have is like our actions and our choices and the way we're being. Yeah. So, but now that's more important than ever because those yeah. systems and structures are less important now. And it's all to do with the individual and how many people kind of step into their empowerment. Yeah. Um, but it'd be interesting for you actually to share like um so like whenever I tell somebody that they're not energetic it's not energetically correct for them to like share their thoughts and opinions they really don't like it but then they'll often come back to me in a few months and be like how interesting I really played with that and I noticed like when I'm kind of sharing when I'm trying to force my opinions opinions on people like it's falling on deaf ears whereas actually when I just really embody then that's when I actually like people really start listening and asking me questions. So I'm, I'm curious, like what, what your experience has been with human design? Well, I, yeah, there was a lot of things initially because, and also I was just really pissed off that I was a 1%. I just thought, oh, I'm sick of this. I want life to be a bit easier. Yeah. So but, sorry, I should give a bit of background actually before, before we dive into this. Yeah. So in human design, there's five energy types. So Leanne is a reflector, which is the rarest of them all. Like, um generators make up 70 percent um pro projectors make up 16 percent manifestors make up like nine percent reflectors are only one percent so they're really really rare and their their strategy and how they're designed to use their energy is very very unique mm -hmm. um and the world's kind of not set up for them in a way because you know the majority don't function in that way so like a lot of success languaging a lot of like how to you know like address your shadow work all that sort of stuff like they're energetically designed in a very very different way so they need to kind of understand their energy so sometimes when people hear about their energy type because it doesn't fit into things they can sometimes find it a bit disempowering so with that background continue <laughs> yeah yeah so yeah uh, so there were you know there were a few things like the oh gosh where do I start I think I think the main thing for me is when I just stopped and went, okay, because I don't like being told what to do for this, <laughs> get this kind of push straight away. And then what I needed to hear, and this is what I'm, I'm really appreciating about uh, human design, is what I love about energy medicine and um, any teacher that I've come across that have gone, how did that feel for you? So I'm showing you this, I'm sharing this with you. It's not, you have to do this. And that's something that I, I never used to do that. I used to be like, this is the way. And I'd go down a path and end up feeling disappointed, which I know is a big, um, again, that's a big key for me to notice when I'm feeling disappointed, I'm not on the right path. And it's uh, that's been really useful to know. But I think... Um, you know, initially this feeling that I knew that I'm like a blank slate and I can try on lots of energy and I'm here to reflect back to what's happening. One thing I think it brought up a lot of feeling really confused a lot of my life because I have experienced that, but I didn't know I was experiencing that. And so there was this bit of re just a rejection. I don't want to be like that. I, you know, that's caused a lot of anguish, a lot of confusion in my life. Yet when I've embraced that and suddenly gone, I, I guess it's it, reframing is everything, isn't it? It's how you see something. And the moment I went, oh, my God, I'm, I can sample so many different ways and none of it needs to be mine. I don't have to... It you know I don't have to get it into my core and live that path. Which I, if I if I really see in the past I've I've done it so many times and then thought 
I give up on things or I lose interest. And and now when I see it, the more I give myself permission to go be present, try on these things that are happening, I'm really enjoying it. And what I'm noticing is my um the emotion that really shows me that I'm in the right place, which is surprise and delight. I'm living that so much more. You know, really, I was like, oh my God, I feel really good, you know, and so many things that um, you know, of of simple things, it's simple day-to-day -day stuff, you know, and then blending in, you know, because I get I guess I feel like I've come a long way from you know, being in my 20s, I'm going to be 60 next year. And I feel I'm generally feeling in a really good place in my life. And I've picked up things along the way. But I feel like there's been this massive piece of the jigsaw, because there was a part of me still going, but what is my purpose? But where is it? And what? And now knowing you're not you, you have got a purpose, but you don't need to know it. Because you're a reflector and you're you know, and, and if people are hearing this for the first time, they might be feeling like me a bit like, what? What do you mean? But I, t I'm re I'm, I guess I'm embodying it now. So I get it. I get that. Actually, I feel like my I'm having more impact. I feel like I'm more in a place. My conversations are richer. I'm noticing how I'm feeling in environments and and work. It seems to flow easier when I let go of that and when I'm willing to experiment with it so yeah that's been mine I feel I'm right at the start of this journey and I, I've listened to my reading several times now and what, what I have noticed as well is and I, I, I know I said this at the beginning of the conversation it's like a there's a subtle shift in the vibration and I, I know the first time I noticed that I thought oh that that feels like when I've done a really good energy medicine session or I've just finished a yoga or I've done an EFT where I feel like, oh, something's really shifted. And that what that's what made me think again, you know, this the new knowledge that's coming in comes in in a different way and affects you in a different way. So even just listening to something and allowing it to sink in and there's obviously a part of me that's going, yeah, that. I recognize, well, all of me is recognizing it at, at a level that's not necessarily in the conscious, if that makes sense, but yeah. I can feel it on a, and you know, it, I really likened it to taking flower remedies because for me, that's when I really feel this deeper shift that consciously, you know, wasn't aware of. So, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I feel really excited about the potential of human design and 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 then when you were saying before, you know, with the the I Ching and the the Tree of Life, and there's the, lots of things coming together. It also, um, you know, the work of Caroline Mace that um, many people may have heard of. That she she um, she is a, a medical intuitive, incredible woman, and she she saw the Christian sacraments, the Tree of Life, and the chakra system as she was teaching one day all come together and her work's incredible at really bringing in you know even the christian sacraments which i think is probably one of the the most institutionalized religion that that we've really separated the wisdom from but she talks about how the chakras relate to the sacraments and those stages of life and the rites of passage so I almost feel like, you know, human design is an even newer version going, here you go, guys, and here's the Aching in with it, and here's this and here's that. And apply it to yourself. You're all completely individual and you're all completely connected. So you, when we focus on that individualism, we there's no way we can't affect the whole. So, yeah, that's, I mean, very, you know, probably went off piste as well, but... No, that's no, my exactly. experience of so far of human design, which I feel has come together more. I say in the last months, you know, like lots of threads have suddenly gone. Ah, oh, okay, this mm -hmm. it, it, it's it, it's in me. It feels more in my core, and it's interesting when that happens as well because it's almost like 
it's like there's a distant memory like of course I know this of course I know this you know I, I know you know and it uh, but I can't quite say what it why but that it's like waking up to something and going oh yeah 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 I completely agree and I really know that feeling that's actually the feeling I've always had with learning astrology and human design is that mostly astrology to be fair but like that remembering feeling like it just all went in so easily yeah. um which kind of always like is like a good sign for me I'm like mm, this is meant for me you know like when you really kind of digest things and and that's the theory with human design as well as like everything you like everything you're interested in everything that ever just kind of like you know piques your interest something anything that flows none of that is by accident mm. it's really the universe putting signposts on your path yeah. to to your purpose mm. and you know this is a bit nuanced because there's five different energy types but most of us really what human design teaches that if you just apply your strategy and authority in the moment right now you will naturally live out your purpose and you'll naturally be led to your purpose and that's the beauty of human design and that for me was the biggest thing where I was just like oh I can just stop trying to figure it out yeah <laughs> I'm just, yeah yeah you know, what's in front of me right now and how can I respond to that in the best way and just throw your energy into the things that your strategy is telling that's right for you telling you that it's right for you and then when you do that, be like, oh, how did that feel? Was that right? Did that feel good? If yeah. not, let's pull back and we'll go in a different direction. But just trusting that every step that you're taking, you know, that the universe is communicating with you and its own, like in, in the way that it does. So for every energy type, that's a bit different. So for projectors, it's more about like um, waiting to respond to something and your your body will respond in like a, a sorry, I think I say generators then. So generators. Projector. You said projector. Uh, sorry. So yeah. for generators specifically for them it's like they, the universe speaks to them in their excitement and desire because they have a defined sacral center so it's all about desire mm. whereas um projectors it's more like they're more here to kind of like wait for invitations so that's another one where when usually when I explain projector or reflector to people they're a bit like oh I don't know how I feel about that and then they'll come back to me in a few months and be like this completely changed my life mm. um but also with human design what like the thing that I found most helpful for me was understanding the conditioning of my type um because that so like human design really is a system of dehomogenization and within that it's how we decondition ourselves to for, um and like the things that are blocking us and when we decondition then that's when our design can function in the best possible way um and for me my biggest conditioning for my type is that we're conditioned to believe that we're manifestors, which are people who are here to go out and initiate and make things happen. And they're here to act on urges immediately and they create energy in the world. They're really like the, not the leaders because this is an energy type, right? It's not a personality type. And that is a big difference, but um, manifestors are only 9% of the population. But when we look back in history, all of the leaders, all of the Kings and Queens, all of the people who were heads of big movements, all of them were all of they were all of them were manifestors because that was really what served in that time like big leaders like um kind of leading massive groups of people so all of our success languaging all of the books that we've kind of been given all of the things that we've said like you know go out there just do it make it happen it's only actually energetically correct for nine percent of the population yeah. so you can start to see where there's a quite a lot of disparity between these so 70 yeah. percent of us are a generated type of some sort and for me, what I already learned is that I'm not actually meant to go out there, initiate, figure it out, like do the thing. But actually what's energetically correct for me is to get myself in alignment and to wait to respond. So I'm not here to create, but I'm here for the universe to send me things to respond to. And then within my body, because my my energy type is a visceral feeling, that's how the universe communicates to me, is more of a, do you like that? Is that a yes for you? Do you desire that? Or is that a no? And that's really kind of how I experience it way more complicated than that. And I don't want to go too much into the energy types, the, the strategies, the authorities, what they mean, because it's too complicated for this specific session. And maybe we can, yeah. you know, do yeah. session, we could go deeper into that. But what I'm really trying to demonstrate there is like, it's that relief, that moment of relief when you're like, Oh, I don't have to do that thing that always felt wrong for me anyway. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, even like doing set cold sales calls for me, like going out and initiating business where I'm not working in response to something like, you know, I've not done a lot of that, but I've done, you know, little bits of it in my past. It felt like walking through mud. It just felt like mm. so wrong. Mm. And actually it's like, oh, okay. Like that's actually how I'm designed. And that there's a, there's a reason and a purpose for that. 
And that's really what all these systems do. They give meaning and purpose to the traits that we have. So like, I'm someone who I, I like, I know the part of my job is I coach people with ADHD and I speak to them every day um, and I help them like stay on track with their goals. But one thing that I notice in the difference, I have a friend actually who I've done a human design reading for. She also has ADHD. And we were talking about this the other day is like the difference between the languaging around ADHD of like symptoms to be managed, um, you know, the problems that you have. And these are the ways that you can deal with it. Whereas human design, um, we have a type called manifesting generators and they're here to be all over the place and it's a good thing. So they're here to go from A to Z, back to A again, then to B, then to Y. So like they're just supposed to be all over the place and they're not supposed to be consistent. They they learn really quickly. So they're people who will do three horse riding lessons, get all the information that they need. And then in 20 years, it's going to be relevant and their paths are going to be everywhere. They're here to be multi-passionate. And there's a lot of different traits within human design that can indicate symptoms of ADHD. And it's not to say that one is better than the other or one, one is true. That's not what I'm saying here. But what's interesting is the languaging in human design gives meaning and purpose and opportunity to personality traits. Whereas when we're looking at something as a condition or a symptom or something that's wrong with you because you don't fit into this really narrow parameter of what we consider a, a functional human, mm. then then we create like negative beliefs about ourselves. So that's what I love about human design is it's the empowerment of like, this is who you are and how cool is that? And how can we get this into the best possible, like how can we get this, the stuff that you have into optimum state so you can thrive in your own way? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's re it's the reframe again, isn't it? The reframe. And it's that it's that moment of going, let's see this in a different way. Like I, you know, I I always think about when I I I was sharing the house with a a guy who um sorry, it's my mum phone and <laughs> your your nanny. <laughs> um yeah, I I remember um yeah, I was really struggling with my health and I was having a big tantrum one day saying I'm really weak and weedy. I'm, I've got another chest infection. And, and he said, no, your body's really strong. See it as a strength because your body speaks to you really clearly. And whereas I was, you know, I was re reacting to everything. I couldn't have dairy. I couldn't do this, couldn't do that. And that was a moment for me where it really made a massive difference to my house just to suddenly go, oh my God, I'm strong. My body's really clever and it's just telling me and it's working for me. And yeah, first of all, make peace with that. And it helped me to follow what it was saying rather than that, again, the fight, the fight, the fight, the push against something. Yeah. And uh, I, I, we, we're lucky now as well, because I think when, when you talk about deconditioning, because the other thing about the age that we're living in is there are, we've got emotional freedom technique. We've got um, the ancient practices. We've got ways that can help us decondition. So it's almost like the more we embrace something and go, okay, so this is the way I've been living, but this is, and then, and then it's the change in the habits. Cause that's what I've found useful now. Then it, in my practice, you know, when, when I see myself, I'm really stuck in that. I'm really, I, I know that this isn't beneficial for me. Um, then there, there are tools and techniques that you can really help to get into the unconscious mind, connect with that energy that's in you and make the path smoother to actually moving towards, you know, creating habits and ways of being that are really aligned with your unique design. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And I think that's one thing like, you know, human design can just give you like little indications of like, okay, we, we understand where this conditioning might be coming from. That's great. And then you have consciousness around it. That's the first step. Mm. And then obviously then starting to be like, oh, okay, well, let's play with this technique that might help us with the deconditioning process. How can yeah. I stay on track with my strategy and authority? Yeah. Yeah. And actually, then you can get even more into it. And then you can be like, okay, I have loads of air in my astrology chart. And actually maybe breath work, like breath work doesn't really feel good to me. And actually maybe that's because that's probably going to send me out of balance. Right. So mm. there's so many little nuances yeah, yeah. In your chart that you can start to play with and be like, oh, how interesting. So we were talking about this actually before we hit record for me, EFT really, really works for me because I have something which is called feeling cognition in human design, which is like your sixth sense. 
So for me, I, I'm almost like an energy reader. And when I found that out, I was like, oh my God, this, mm-hmm. this is me all over the place. But you always, you always used to laugh at me because when we did EFT sessions together, I'd be like, the energy felt like it was here and now it's coming up out of my throat and then I can feel it moving out of my ears. <laughs> and she's like, what? It's like but, a, a perfect client in a way. It's just like, oh yeah, boom, boom, boom. Right, let's do another round. Oh yeah, no, it's, it's yeah. stuck. It's stuck. It's not moving. Yeah. But <laughs> it's like that. And then it suddenly helps you realize, oh, EFT is great for me because I have a physical experience when I've actually shifted something and that's amazing. But for some other people... Yeah that yeah. might not be energetically correct for them. Some people have yeah. like hot and cold environments that make them thrive. So some people, when they're in a cold environment, their, their energy doesn't really function. It switches off. That's actually where they can be more restful. Mm-hmm. And then when it when they're in a warm environment, that's when their energy kicks into gear. So even knowing little nuances like that, like maybe hot yoga would be good for you. Like, yes. you know, yeah. like yeah. it's so fun because then it's just, and yeah. it, you know, you're never going to know until you try it anyway. Right. But when you have consciousness around the mechanics of your energy, then you can be like, Oh, cool. That makes sense. Maybe I can do more of that or I can explore that even more. Um, so I guess it's just another comfort layer of confirmation on top of the things that work. And then also yeah. maybe little signposts and guidance of like where you could start to really flesh yourself out and like experiment with different things as well. So. And I think as well, like in these times, tolerance is needed for all mm-hmm. of us because there are so many different opinions and, 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 and I think ways of living, ways of approaching things and, I think that the more we the more we really embrace the fact that like for example if I I can go and look up any diet right now and find all the science behind it all the reasons that I should be doing this this is the one I can do the same thing with any 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 technique anything any sort of um anything that's going to enhance me or my life in in some way and actually the answer is all of those are right for somebody. And the fact that we're moving out of this age now into more individual, that's why I think there's more choice. Mm -hmm. However, what we need to do is get back and go, right, how does this apply to me personally? And once you've got that, then you're actually you're you're cutting out the middleman in a lot of ways because it's like, well, here's all these things. Here's all the diets here. But then understanding your real unique energy and the way it's works, like, oh, chances are this one is going to make more sense. I'll try this, Mm -hmm. you know, and also knowing not becoming there are no absolutes. You know, it's just like that we do have those commonalities of we know what it's like to have to choose, to have to find ourselves, to not understand why. You know, I remember with when with asthma that I, I struggled with a lot in my life, hearing people go, I took magnesium and it went. And I just got to that point of going, don't anybody say anything else to me because I've tried everything, you know, and it, it, it's, it wears you down. However, it's like that and not, you know, not, of course, pass on what, what's worked for you to people. But, you know, that feeling sometimes of, of not, we all know what that feels like until we really embrace what's our uniqueness and yeah how we work um I, yeah I feel that the tools are there for us and if the more we get into how can we empower ourselves how can we really stand by our values how we want to live what kind of world we want to live in then human design is here to play you know an important role in that that's what that's how I feel so yeah absolutely and what you said then was so interesting about like getting grounded in ourselves and then really you know experimenting and seeing what actually truth truth is to you because truth is subjective now <laughs> I mean it always has been to an extent but like yeah, I think yeah. it's more now yeah and also you know in January this is going to be even more true <laughs> because we are going through a shift right now where Pluto is finishing up in Capricorn where it's been for 20 years and it's now moving into Aquarius so we're moving from a heavy dense period of earth where there was a lot of structure into a period of time of like into an era of air where you know, all of those structures where Pluto has been moving through has has really deconstructed those structures. And now it's time for us to rebuild as it moves on. But also this is where everything's going to speed up. And Aquarius is all about technology and like newness and innovation and, you know, 
and again, there's imbalance and outbalance manifestations of that energy, right? And um, but what what I'm just trying to say there is like the bottom is going to fall out of everything, and everything that we think that we know now won't be relevant in a year's time. So my human design teacher was talking about an, an experience that she had where she used to work in a magazine and she went down into the archives and was looking at all of these nutrition magazines from the 1980s that was telling you that the healthiest thing that you could do is eat a grapefruit for breakfast and a black coffee. <laughs> so, but it's subjected to what we know at the time, right? So like even all the health advice that's out there now mm -hmm. it might be proved wrong in like two, three years. And then what do we have then? So it's really all about using your discernment and really noticing when do I thrive? How does this work for me? How does this impact me? And getting really becoming your own energy reader, really. Because yeah. when we pay attention to like, no, this is right for me and this works for me, then that's really how we can discern what truth is. Yeah. And also, again, to say this works for me now. Yeah. It's like being that, you know, let's let's update ourselves. Let's because, you know, when when you get when you get fixed in anything and it, this is um you know any system that says we know all the answers this is how it works this is how it is or we can't embrace anything until it's fit this box this box or this box you know which often which is what what happens with we haven't scientifically proved that so therefore it doesn't exist and it's like we need to push the parameters out we need to be able to go hopefully in 10 years time you know we'll, we'll we'll feel completely different again hopefully next year we're going to be saying oh no this is best for me now this is best for us yeah. and the, the only other thing I want to say because one of the things that really cropped up for me when I heard the age of individualism I my resistance to that was suddenly like no 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 we, we've got to look after each other now we're in the collective we yeah. And, and it's not, but it's not individualism as in look after number one, get back to you, what's right for me, sort yourself out. It really, it's a new way of yeah. being in your individual energy that we haven't actually done before. It is marrying the wisdom, the intelligence, everything that we have now mm -hmm. into. And I think no matter what, even though we're looking at how do I work, what's work, what works best for me, and that is also good for the collective, the, the common principles will always be there that we definitely thrive in love, compassion, fairness. Those, those will always rule, will always win over, even if we've got to go through thousands of years of war and turmoil and everything else. But, and I think that's, the thing at the end of the day, there, there's a pureness and beauty that we all carry in those principles and trusting ourselves and trusting that when we do get aligned, that is naturally, that is where we're naturally going to want to go. Because when you're happy, you naturally want, you're more generous, you're, you're more tolerant, you're able to really connect with other people. So I think that's a really important thing to say as well, because that, that was my reaction initially going, wait a minute, no, we're, we're through with that individualism. Yeah. You know, but actually, it, again, it's that different way. It, it's that new way of going. When I thrive, when I'm truly in my power and in my flow, I, I will be connected to those universal truths that kindness, compassion and, and yeah. love and respect are, are really the root of, of, of life yeah I think so completely agree and yeah I've had a conversation with someone who was like individualism is the, is the problem in the world right now and again you know as I mentioned like every concept is neutral it's the consciousness through which that thing is applied yeah. as yeah, how, yeah. how it manifests right so yeah. like the age of the collective there are like there's a lot of things that happened that were for the better but there was a lot of things that really didn't as well and like it's just so all it really is to say is like, of course, there are out of balance manifestations of individualism, of course, but really for us to make an impact in this next era, that we need to kind of step into that win-win consciousness of when we're, th and that's really the theory of human design is that when we're thriving, when we're in, when we're following our purpose, when we're aligned, when we're lit up, when we're genuinely enjoying life, mm. that's when we actually are making an impact as well. So when you win, the world wins.
that's really what human design is trying to teach. We're not in that win lose consciousness anymore where, you know, if you, you know, to, for everybody to win, someone else has to lose, someone else has to, you know, be harmed or get hurt or, you know, be disadvantaged by that. And that's really kind of, I mean, you know, a lot of our conditioning is around that as well. Like, you know, you must, you must sacrifice yourself and you must, you know, do all these things. And again, anyway, pro probably another conversation. So I don't want to get too sidetracked. Plenty of conversations. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's great. It goes forever. It goes. Yeah, yeah, it goes, yeah. Um, but thank you. I've really, really enjoyed that. And I feel mm -hmm. like I've gained even more of an understanding now as well. Um, I hope the viewers have enjoyed it as much as we have um i'm assuming you enjoyed it hannah <laughs> yeah, no it was lovely yeah. Yeah. one of my favorite things to talk about in the world so i yeah, guess you can tell. Yay. <laughs> you can tell. it's like that's you lit up um so please give us a thumbs up please subscribe come and join us there are many many different conversations we're really here to share knowledge at this time keep these really important conversations going um and thank you for joining us thank and you hannah any last words before you thank you no thank you for having me it's been a pleasure